Good afternoon, Ryan Permelia, field agronomist with Pioneer. Um, we're out here today in this cornfield taking some pretty late season tissue samples, which isn't something that I think is, is commonly done uh, when we're growing corn here in Delaware, Maryland, and Virginia. So typically throughout a year, we like to take corn sample, corn tissue samples um, at a couple different growth stages to kind of monitor what's going on. Probably the most popular is a V4 to V8 whole plant sample. Then we have a lot of tissue samples that are pulled VTR1 around tassel and silk emergence. And then what we're doing today is, is an R5 to R6 um, tissue sample grab today. So uh, we're right around 2400 GDUs with this corn crop here. So we're almost to maturity. We're probably that R5 um, layer, not quite the black layer. And I think that's one of, the, one of the great times to take a tissue sample so you can really figure out how your crop is finishing throughout the growing season. Um, you know, it's, it's important to know what part of the plant you want to sample when you're doing different growth stages. Early in the year, you're going to pull a whole plant sample most of the time. At this point in the year, we're really only going to pull one leaf and we're going to pull what we like to call the lobe leaf, L-O-B-E, leaf opposite and below the ear. And the reason we want to pull that one is it's the closest to the ear um, where the plant is actually moving the nutrients up to the sink, but we're not actually going to impact the yield of that plant or pull the one that's directly related to sunlight capture for the ear too, so the plant can go ahead and finish making out an ear. Um, at this point, with us pulling tissue samples now, we're not really doing anything for a corrective measure. Um, we've pretty much made all the applications that we're gonna do on this corn here that we're, that's standing behind us right now, but what we are looking at is different drawdown levels within the plant, and maybe some things that we can change or set ourselves up better for the following year, different nutrients that we might want to look at that we see different levels with um, that maybe are, are out of whack or are not doing what we think they should do as the plant starts to move nutrients from the stalk, from the leaves, and to the ear. So um, the past couple years, Pioneer Agronomy Sciences has really worked on putting together a project that gives you yield goals by growth stages and what you want to look at as far as nutrient concentrations within yield goals and within growth stages. And we've really made a conscious effort to look at this growth stage, that, that end of the season, R5, R6, um, which isn't something that we typically have sufficiency ranges for that are always um, known, it would be probably the best way to put it. Um, and when it comes to this, there's two key, key nutrients that I focus on. The first one, of course, is nitrogen, right? That's the number one thing when everybody thinks about nutrients in growing corn. We're going to see, you know, nitrogen disappear from the bottom of the plant as we get closer to harvest time. And that's just the plant moving nitrogen out of the lower leaves. But what we don't want to see is that those leaves around the ear start to show any kind of deficiency. And a lot of times you may see levels that aren't sufficient, but don't show the deficiency in the leaf. So tissue samples around this time are a great opportunity for do that. The other one that I really look at is potassium or K. Uh, potassium plays a huge role in stalk strength and grain quality. So when we see um, depressed levels of potassium late in the year, those tends to be the fields that maybe we run into some standability or, or stalk quality issues as our corn gets closer to the harvestable moisture that we want to have. So if we can identify some of those fields that maybe don't have the K levels we want, maybe we can keep an eye on them and monitor stalk integrity as we get closer to harvest too. So I encourage everybody um, to look at the nutrient sufficiency ranges by growth stage and yield goal that Pioneer Agronomy Sciences has put out. You can ask your territory manager, field agronomist, or sales rep. Um, we have those out there too. And, and take an opportunity to maybe go out and tissue sample some of your fields late in the year to really see what you have going on. So thank you. That concludes this Pioneer Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.